Mr. Wenig, you report Q2 net sales just above guidance. What drove your results? The results for the second quarter were driven by an equal division between memory customers and logic customers, uh, which was about equal to Q1. Next to that, we had uh, over 500 million euros of sales in what we call our service and field option sales, which was also very good. What is driving that part of the business? The service and field option sales uh, keep going up. Uh, may I remind you that uh, four or five years ago we did 125 million per quarter, now we do 500 million. That's a quadrupling. Uh, so two main reasons. Of course, the installed base grows. Uh, but more importantly, customers are looking at how can they efficiently use their installed base. So they're looking for upgrades, um, they're looking for the installed machines being able to be used in next nodes, uh, and that means we can sell a lot of option products, especially the, what we call the holistic lithography uh, products, um, are in very high demand and uh, are pretty essential uh, to our customers uh, in order for them to use those machines for the next few nodes. What are the current trends that you see in the semiconductor industry and how do they affect your outlook? Yeah, we basically have two major segments, uh, memory segments and logic. And uh, memory we divide in DRAM and NAND. Um, just to quickly go through them, DRAM is pretty strong. Uh, we have um, two new fab staking tools, a third one being planned. Um, profitability of our DRAM customers is pretty good. So we are talking about a healthy industry that is adding a capacity, which is good, which helps our business. Uh, the NAND business is, um, I would say, pretty stable. Uh, stable as compared to 2014. Uh, and for NAND, we have some promises because uh, two large fabs are being planned. Uh, they will take tools next year, so that's a promise. Logic, that's where the interesting part is. Uh, logic, uh, I said this before, uh, uh, we are now seeing four nodes um, taking machines or capacity at, this, at the same time, 28 nanometer which is an older node, but still taking capacity. 20 nanometer node doesn't take capacity, but we see a lot of relocations to 14 and 16. 14 and 16 nanometer FinFETs in logic are now ramping. And we see the first shipments, the second half of this year, for the 10 nanometer node. So we're very busy, you could almost say, pressure on Moore's law type of activity uh, in the logic industry. Uh, and that paints the picture. So you could say memory good, logic good, so it's good for us. And with regard to outlook, what are your expectations for sales for the third quarter? Third quarter sales will be between 1.5 and 1.6 billion um, with um, about a 45% margin. Uh, the margin uh, is um, determined largely by mix. Uh, we will sell a bit more KRF systems, which are the lower priced uh, systems in, uh, the second, uh, in the third quarter. Um, so, uh, very healthy sales in uh, Q3. You are guiding for R&D spending and SG&A costs that are a bit higher than in previous quarters. Why is that? Um, clearly, we need to invest in uh, the future. I mean, we are investing simultaneously in uh, the immersion products, which are still our bread and butter product today, and in EUV. But the major reason for that increase has to do with the foreign exchange rates. Uh, with the acquisition of Simon, we have more activity, SDNA, but definitely R&D in the US. Uh, and of course, as we all know, uh, the US dollar appreciated against the euro, and that is the main reason for that cost increase. You just talked about the third quarter outlook. What about the remainder of the year? The remainder of the year looks good. Um, when we look back, uh, let's say, three months ago at the first quarter results, uh, we indicated that the second uh, half of the year could be somewhat lower than the first half of the year. Now, over the last six weeks, uh, we've seen um, both in memory and in logic uh, uh, an acceleration of customer uh, demand. And that uh, brings us to the situation where we believe that for the remainder of the year, we could see sales levels uh, which are uh, equal to the uh, prognosis through the outlook for Q3. So at that level, with some upside potential. Uh, so that looks good. And that means, a, again, a record year in, in terms of sales? Yeah, if you add it all up, it's going to be uh, a, a you know, year that's going to be higher than 2014, which was the pre-record year, so this is going to be a record year. Three months ago you highlighted three main priorities for EUV. Productivity, availability and shipment of the next generation uh, EUV systems this year. What progress have you made towards these three targets? There are three things, as you said. Uh, first, uh, productivity. We used to be at 40 watt in Q1. Uh, we used Q2 to upgrade uh, our machines in the field 
and almost all are now upgraded to 80 watt, uh, which was uh, successful. Uh, with that upgrade, we also um, added availability packages, availability improvements, and that led to an improvement from about 50, 55 percent uh, in, in, in the first half to currently around 70 percent uh, availability of machines that we have in the field after they've been upgraded to 80 watt. So we see progress on both sides from 40 to 80 watt from you could say 50, 55 percent availability to 70 percent availability uh, and that's good because that's what customers want. On shipments um, we have a target for six, I think we'll do five this year Number six was uh, planned really towards the end of the year. I think that it will move into 2016. So to be safe, we'll do five. Have you taken new orders for EV systems? We have taken new orders, which was uh, good as a result of the uh, volume purchase agreement that we signed with a large US-based customer. Um, uh, under that volume purchase agreement, we received the first six EUV orders, um, which is very good. And when do you expect additional orders? The additional orders will be uh, a result of uh, the tests that customers are currently doing. And you have to distinguish between what I would call early adopter, which is largely the leading edge logic customers. Eh? They, they need that for their 10 nanometer and I would say 7 nanometer development. Um, and those customers um, need more availability and they need more productivity. Now we just talked about that. Uh, that has gone up both and they're running currently marathon tests. Marathon tests over several weeks um, as a month in order to achieve targets of good waivers per day. That will determine the moment in which, at, at which the customers will take the decision. Now we will go into a production mode, but then they have to take into account the one and a half to two year lead time. So that means that you have to subtract when they want to start one and a half to two years and then they need to place the orders after the uh, well, moment that they have uh, decided that EUV works for them. Uh, as a production uh, uh, a tool. EUV sometimes steals all the limelight, but it's clear that immersion lithography will continue to be used in chip production for a very long time. What are you working on in that part of the business? That's a very good question. I think we should not forget that the workhorse of the industry is still immersion. And for instance, dry systems, uh, KRF. Um, so we put a, a lot of effort and R&D money uh, and focus on that part of our business. Um, deep UV will be with us for the next 10-15 years, there's no doubt. And DeepUV needs uh, incremental improvements. So we are putting a lot of R&D focus on it, which results, uh, when we talk about immersion, uh, that we will start to ship our NXT 1980, uh, which has a 10% uh, uh, improvement in productivity, better overlay, which is essential for our customers in the logic space, and increasingly in the memory space because they are using multiple patterning uh, strategies whereby overlay is critically important and part of that you could say productivity loss because you need to pass the waiver more often will be compensated by the higher throughput from 250 waivers to 275 waivers per hour. So also there we're seeing some good progress and good adoption by our customers and let's not forget uh, we make the bulk of our money, we make our, our money with DPUV immersion so let's keep investing.